Hey, it's Aran here. This tech tutorial is going to teach you everything you need to know about substitute variables in system IO. Now, what the heck is substitute variables? Essentially, when you have a person that arrives to your website and submits their first name, their last name, their email address, you can actually reply or send them an automated email that is tailored to them. It will say, hey, Joe, hey, Bill, hey, Mary, and so on. Now, you can choose to have just their first name or their first name and last name. And you can also give and customize the email address with other parts of the information as well. Now, it could be that it's their mailing address, and also in System.io, there is the ability to add additional substitute variables, meaning you can create custom fields. So if you want to get a questionnaire made by somebody and submit their information in some fashion and answer a specific question, or you want to customize your contact task to make it a little bit more personalized, then you can do those things using that particular feature. Now, I'm going to show my screen and show you what I mean exactly by substitute variables and also how you can use that when you are creating a contact page or when you're getting an application made from somebody who is coming to work with you and you can set up a bunch of questionnaires and things that you can ask them as part of it to collect information. So let me share my screen and show you how to do all that. So first of all, you can see that I'm writing an email and I'm going to say, hey, and I'm going to click on this button right here, which is substitute variable. And you could see I can say first name. Now, I'm going to use this test account that I have. And you will notice that the first name here is test because it's a test account. So when this email gets sent it, as a newsletter, this particular email subscriber, this part is going to be replaced with the word test. So I don't put the word test because then everybody gets the word test. I'm just going to put substitute variable. Now, let's just say that here you can see that I have the country as well. I can also do something like per the information I have, you live in and substitute variable country. And then it will say Australia. Or if someone else is in Denmark, you'll say Denmark or in the Philippines or in the US or Canada or whatever. Now, what's going to happen is if there is no information on the contact, this part will remain blank. So this will not make sense if you send it to everybody. However, you just need to be aware that is what substitute variable means. So you have a bunch of those things right here. And some of these you can actually custom create. So for example, you will notice that this part where it says notes which is what I have. This is something that I personally created. So if I want to leave some notes about a specific person, I can do that. So I can say, this is a test account and it will just appear like, like so basically. And I just want to save that. So I have that information. Okay. Now I can leave some other notes. Like if somebody, for example, uh, refunded or they uh, put in a chargeback uh, and reported me to their bank or something like that, or they or nasty in some fashion, whatever. I do want to leave a note so I know I don't really want to work with them ever again, basically, as an example. Or if somebody, for example, like this test buyer or whatever, let's say they made a payment through a different platform, like in Kajabi or Thrivecard, which I sometimes use, then I will make a note, joined my membership through whatever. So this is just a place where I just leave general notes because there's no specific feature like that. So this is just for my own eternal documentation, eternal notes. Now, here is a scenario that has come up recently, is if somebody wants to submit a contact us form, there is no way to redirect them to a thank you page. So how do you do that? So let's just say I'm now going to an account. It doesn't matter which account I use. I'm going to go click on add custom field. And now I'm going to add contact us submission. And I'm going to click on and it will create a unique key. Now the unique key is going to end up being a substitute variable. So now I'm going to click on save. Now you will see that there's going to be a section added right here. Now I'm going to just click on save of this particular email. I'm going to refresh. And now you will notice out of the substitute variable, all of a sudden I have a contact as submission. So if somebody submitted some information, for example, in the email, in the contact us, I can repeat to them what they said. 
So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And I'll give you another use cases for the different, for different things that I can do here to make it worthwhile. So I'm going to go to a test funnel that I have, and I'm going to click here on this. And then I'm going to click on add new step. I'm going to click on contact us funnel demo. I'm going to click on squeeze page. There is also, by the way, a contact us page, but it doesn't really, it's not what I need because uh, I cannot redirect it to a thank you page. So that's just something that's a bit annoying. Okay, so now I'm going to just pick one of the funnels. I'll just pick this one. I'm going to click on edit page. And then in here, I'm going to, I'm just going to delete all of this stuff right here. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to drag something to the top here. And I'm going to say, contact us with your requirements or whatever, right? Then I'm going to now do, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on form input. Form number one is going to be, I want their first name. Now I can duplicate this and I'm going to want their email address. And then I'm going to duplicate that again and I'm going to have them contact us information. So this is where they can submit your inquiry. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to need to add a button, which is the submission button. And it's just going to say submit. And then it's going to take to a custom URL. Now the custom URL I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take them to confettipage.com or whatever, just for demonstration purposes, like so. And, and I'm going to say, submit your query. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm going to do is notice that I have this contact funnel education at gmail.com and there is no information here. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to exit from this page. Okay, now I'm on this page right here and I'm going to click on automation rule. Now in the automation rule, I want to set up the fact that they're going to receive an email. So I'm going to say when a funnel step is subscribed, I want to send him an email. And that email is going to say, I'm going to click on send email, click on plus. I'm going to call this contact us demo, substitute variable. And then I'm going to say, hey there, first name. Thanks so much for submitting your inquiry. Here is a re reminder of what you wrote. And then you're going to click here, contest us submission. We will get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here or something. And then you can leave the link here basically. Okay. All right. So now we're going to make this also bold. Let's see if that works. Now I will just do this to make this a little bit more obvious. Now I'm going to click on save and I'm going to click on save rule. Typically I recommend you also add a tag. I'm not going to add a tag right now. Actually, you will just add a tag like so. Okay. Now, if you want to get notified as well, that somebody sent you this email, you can go here, send an email to a specific email address and put your own email address here. So you will say contact form submission. Okay. Hey there, Iran. This is your friendly system IO bot. Just letting you know that someone submitted a contact form, their name, and then you're going to put their email address. Where is it? There we go. Here is what they wrote in their submission. Okay. So that's that. Make this in big text. And this will be sent to this email, gmail.com. Okay. I will add a little emoji as well because I like adding emojis to my stuff. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to click on save. So I've got two automation rules. One, email the contact, the person that actually submitted. And number two, email me to let me know somebody submitted. So now I'm going to click on save rule. I'm going to go to step configuration. And then I'm going to click here and say contact us demo. And now we're going to go to incognito to do a test. Now, if we did everything correctly, what should happen is I will get an email notification to a gmail.com letting me know somebody submitted an inquiry. The second thing that will happen is the fake email address, the test email address, funneleducation at gmail.com 
is going to get a thank you email, basically. Like, thanks for submitting, blah, blah, blah. And then that information should be in the CRM of that particular account. Those are the three things that should happen. So let's do a test. So let's call a test buyer, funnel education at gmail.com. This is a contact form test to show you how substitute variable works in system IO and how to use it with contact form submissions so that a thank you page can be set up after someone submits that form. I am recording this as a YouTube video. Okay, so now, obviously this is not the best user experience, but that's the workaround basically. Now, if I do this all correctly, this link should redirect me over to confettipage.com. So let's click on submit. Now it takes me to confettipage.com. All good, that's the thank you page. Obviously you can set up your own thank you page, doesn't really matter, doesn't need to be this. And now you're going to look at leads and you're going to see that this submission was done. And now we're gonna go to this account, fileeducation at gmail.com and let's have a look. And you're going to see that this contact form submission information is being added right here in the CRM. Now, if you scroll down, you're also going to see that this email contact us demo was sent to the person and it hasn't been opened because we haven't checked it out yet. So now I'm going to go to my email and show you that I received this email. So here is the contact form submission and it says, Hey there, Iran, this is your friendly system. IO bot. Just letting you know, someone submitted the contact form test buyer. This is their email address. Here's what they wrote. This is a content form test da, 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 and this is the submission. So you can see that it's all done correctly. Now we're going to go to funnel education at gmail.com, the test that we just did. And here you go. Contact us demo. Hey there. Thank you so much for submitting the reply. Here's a reminder of what you wrote. This is what they wrote. We'll be back to you soon. This worked perfectly. It came up in, in bold. That's perfect. So this is how you use substitute variables in setting up a contact form. So you can actually have a customized thank you page. Now, at some point, I'm hoping that System.io will actually have a thank you page as well. But for now, since they don't, this is a good workaround so you can set it up. Now, I want to give you one last example of a use case. I was doing this with a contact form. You can have other things here. So for example, if you want to segment your audience based on information or something like that, then that's also a good thing. For example, you can have somebody, how did you find us? For example, so you can actually have a form submission asking them, how did you find us? And then when they fill it out, this information will come in. You can also say, what is your Instagram at handle, right? You can also set up other things like what is your website? Or if you are in a different niche, maybe you could, you know, segment it if they are uh, a parent or not a parent, if they're a dog owner or not a dog owner, or if they have, um, you know, whatever, you can basically segment it. In my case, I might segment it by what software you're using, but again, it all depends on how you want to quantify or how you want to segment your audience and stuff like that. This is really good if people are submitting their information to work with you and things like that, uh, or how they found you and things along these lines. So you can get, kind of save the information and create a bit of a CRM. Now note that when you add these custom fields, every time you do, it will automatically appear in all contacts. It's not going to be just in the one contact and it's going to just pull the information exactly as it is. So now if I click on subject to variables, you will see all the other things here. How did you find us? What is your Instagram handle? And so on and so forth. There is of course my favorite use case, which is if you want to get them to promote something from you, then let's just say I want them to promote my beginner's guide to email marketing, let's say. So email guide like so. So I'm going to grab this URL of this particular funnel. And if I want them to promote it, I can actually put the URL here. And then this is a little bit annoying how they have it, but I'll do my best to show you. Okay. So you're going to basically grab forward slash question mark S a equal. You're going to grab that. You're going to put this here and then you're going to put substitute variable contact affiliate ID. And then this, they can then get and this will be their affiliate link to promote this particular sales page. So every particular person is going to using substitute variable is going to get their own unique affiliate link. And of course you can also give them their own affiliate dashboard by clicking here 
and clicking here and just adding that there and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much how you would use it. Um, obviously, I re recommend you keep things simple. Don't try to overcomplicate this. But for the specific use cases I just showed you, contact us. And also, if you want to ask some questions to inquire a little bit about them, how they found you, things like that, then this is a great way to build up a bit more of a CRM to use System.io as a CRM so you have more information about each individual person that come to you. So that's about it. Hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you all in the next video.